Welcome. I'm your host, Darieth Chisholm, and I'd like to thank our guest from our Parent Entrepreneur episode for staying with us for this show after the show. Digital media surrounds us in the devices we use, in the toys our kids play with, and more and more often in the classroom. But how can we make the most of the digital technology to help our children learn and communicate and innovate? In this case, you all have invented some really cool toys and, and innovative ways for children to learn. But when we look at digital devices and digital media, how is it that uh, it is inspiring curiosity and innovation with our children? I think we can always use digital media as an extension of their, to help extend their curiosity, right? Kids are naturally, they are curious beings. They want to know, they see a construction vehicle and they want to understand what it is. So instead of leaving it in this one dimension, right, and add, add, you're adding other dimensions, that includes books, that includes media, that includes all different types of media, apps and videos and playing, and so it's really there to extend what, um, what they already want to know about. Yeah, yeah I, th I think the, the way I think of this is, um, there's a passive use of media where you just, for example, watch a movie, right. and then there's active use of media. And I think every time you add an active element, the experience become uh, much more uh, holistic and healthy for a child. Because um, active elements means they are sort of engaged, they're thinking, they're doing something with the media itself. Um, so I, th I, th and I think what's really powerful about the media is inherently is very engaging. We have seen it over and over again. If you put a movie in front of a kid, they can watch something for three hours. Yeah. Um, and so the engagement comes naturally in a, in a digital media. I think it's just about adding other elements to the media that makes it a very holistic experience. I mean, I would like to add that you know I think that there are a lot of positive examples out there where kids are learning through playing games mm -hmm. and the socialization and becoming digital citizens because that's what they have to learn, right? So, mm -hmm. I think that you know embracing the fact that kids are texting and using Facebook, et cetera, mm -hmm. and thinking how you can embrace that and use that as a tool for them to learn new things. And you really do have to think of it as you're using it as a tool, mm -hmm. and there's no way to get away from it. So mm -hmm. it's now how can we embrace it, but encourage learning along the way as well. And so when we think about how to bring families together around digital media and technology, mm -hmm. uh, what would your advice be for that? I think everyone's sort of spoken in similarly in terms of uh, the relationship between the digital world and the, the physical world, the real world, whatever it may be. And I, I view family engagement uh, as something that's, that is not centered around the digital device. The digital device is an extension of the family. So it's just I think seeing it as a resource, a tool, a way to build curiosity, a way to, to do things with your hands, a way to do something, something actively is what it's all about. It's not really uh, trying to find a place for it as much as figuring out where it fits within your existing family uh, behavior. Family That's good advice in, mm -hmm. because instead of worrying about it, you really have to think about how to integrate it. Yeah, right. exactly. I mean, I think as a parent myself, I realize some of my most uh, favorite moments with my daughter are when I'm, play I'm doing things together with her. And I think the digital media can enable the doing together, where sort of that's a mean, not an end itself. Mm -hmm. And I think that sort of build this bond. Yeah. And Plus, there's the lifelong learning, right? I mean, right. I think that the thing I love the best is when you know I'm seeing kids and parents or grandparents learning alongside each other. You know, there's examples where kids are learning how to program, and the parents and the grandparents are kind of holding back, looking, "Oh, that's interesting." And next thing you know, they're beside them <laughs> learning how to program too. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a benefit for everyone. It really bridges the generation gap yeah, if yeah. you think about it, and sure. you know, sure. because clearly some grandparents are. <laughs> Not as technically savvy yeah. or yeah. digital savvy, yeah, sure. if you will. I yeah. think a lot of times parents or grandparents, right, you're thinking, oh, if we're going to do something together, it must be educational. Like this piece of technology must be educational. And instead, you should maybe think of it as being um, not on its own educational, but you can help infuse education into that mm -hmm. technology, mm -hmm. into the media that you're using with your child ask good questions, participate alongside them, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. be a part of the process and then that process becomes the educational part. It doesn't in and of itself have to be that, you know? I think as an entrepreneur itself, the way, the way I sort of build the model is for an adult, a digital technology has changed how we work, how we communicate, how do we move around. It's been very positive transformative change. I think that same change hasn't yet happened and, and how children are growing up. And I think that's where I see a huge opportunity for like what we all of us have been sort of thinking through is how do we make tech that's going to transform yeah. and enable sort of how kids learn, grow. Wonderful, yeah. Mm -hmm. This has been such an interesting conversation. So thank you so much for being a part of the show. And thank you for watching. Join us again next time for another IQ Smart Parent 
show after the show.